Hi, hello everybody. Welcome to another session of One Question a Day. We continue with the chapter on dentine. The question that we are going to describe today is an important essay. Describe the histology and functions of dentine, for which you need to talk about the dentinal tubules, shape, microscopic, submicroscopic structures, including the types, intertubular, intratubular, the hypocalcified areas, the course of dentinal tubules, the types of dentine, the functions, all with diagrams. Jumping into the actual answers, you need to give a brief introduction. Dentin is a viscoelastic structure present both in root and crown portion of the tooth, the functional unit of which is dentinal tubules. Uh, we have to say it's made up of many dentinal tubules, which is very essential. And draw a small diagram, representative diagram showing the pulp or dentoblast, the nucleus, or dentoblastic process the cytoplasmic extension of the odontoblast within the dentinal tubule. Dentinal tubule contains cytoplasmic process called as the odontoblastic process. And these dentinal tubules are S-shaped structures made up of a primary curvature and a secondary curvature. The secondary curvature of which is sinusoidal curve described to be sinusoidal curve. And at the pulpal end, it begins, the dentinal tubules begins at 90 degree to pulp and the first convexity of the S shape is towards the root apex and the next curvature is sinusoidal curve and terminally shows branches. At the apex and nearer to the cervical, there are more or less straight dentinal tubules. The thickness of dentin varies from three to 10 mm depending upon the tooth and the position. It is more thick in the cuspal tips. The diameter is more nearer to the pulps at about three to four micrometers and at the enamel end, it is very less. The types, peritubular or intratubular dentin, is the type of dentin that is found around the dentinal tubules and forms the wall of the or intraspelicuses. They form the bulk of the tubes and forms the wall of the dentinal tubules. They are relatively more hypermineralized than intratubular dentin. Intratubular dentin is the one that is making the dentinal tubule. The thickness of intra or peritubular dentin is twice more than the outer dentin than in the inner dentin part. And between this, you have a periodontoblastic peri space. And the space between the dentinal tubules is lined by an, a dentinal fluid or dental lymph, which is the basis of your hydrodynamic theory. The odontoblastic process is enriched in dentinal fluid. The periodontoblastic space is limited by a lamina limitants which is an organic deposition around the dentinal tubules and lost in decalcification process, appearing as a small minute space. The intertubular dentin presents between two, between the successive dentinal tubules with decalcification because of their hyper mineralization, they remain intact. And that is why we perform a procedure clinically called as uh, acid edge which is mostly with enamel and a tag of dentin. If you go too deep, that is again problematic. The composition is, we have an organic component of dentin, inorganic component of dentin, 65% making up of calcium, hydroxyapatite crystals appearing in the form of calcium phosphate with traces of uh, magnesium salts and phosphates, uh, sorry, carbonates. The organic is collagenous and non-collagenous and the collagen x typical human, 64 M strong, cross banding types of dentin primary dentin these are formed before root completion root completion not formation but root completion okay they are of mantle dental which is the first form dentin just below the dej circumpulpal dentin forms the bulk of the tooth below the mantle dentin and close to the pulp it is soft relatively soft whereas this is highly mineralized. They have typical type 3 collagen with increased size, whereas here the collagen fiber size is decreased. In the mantle dentin, we have what is called as von Croft's fibers. And the primary dentin is after root completion, secondary dentition after root completion, found nearer to the pulp. Between the primary and secondary dentin, there is a sharp bend called as Schrager's line. Tertiary dentin is formed in response to a noxious stimuli. 
in case of caries can be classified as reparative or restorative reparative the odontoblast survives the noxious stimulus whereas in restorative the odontoblast fail to survive new odontoblasts are differentiated predentin these are just newly formed dentin newly formed dentin adjacent to the pulp okay very close to the circumpulpal dentin they are mineral unmineralized dentin predentin when mineralized it becomes dentin the diameter or thickness is about 2 to 6 micrometers the function of dentin is to induce ameloblast to lay down the enamel by the phenomenon of reciprocal inductive protective because enamel is brittle dentin is evolved to be viscoelastic in nature thereby protecting the entire dental apparatus sensory by the theory explained by transduction uh, or hydrodynamic theory dentin is supposed to be sensory also nutritive because they have access to the pulp they enrich and via the dental lymph they nourish the odontoblast secretory because they secrete odontoblast secrete the non collagenous and collagenous protein they have a secretory function reparative in case of need the tertiary dentin formation is there so reparative function is there so function of dentin induced to lay down the enamel protective sensory nutritory secretory reparative that brings to an end on the odontoblast the dentin histology and function if you have time you can talk about interglobular dentin we can talk about uh, enamel uh, spindle that is, uh, gets across into the dentin all this but time is very restricted you have to have about 20 minutes you have to draw all the diagrams and explain so it is better that you limit right and with that we come to an end of this question on histology and functions of dentin stay connected with this channel for another uh, session on one question a day Continue learning incrementally, at least daily one question a day. Happy learning.